Those of you listening, the reason I wait to do this is I don't want it. <coughs> okay, it's recording us. <laughs> okay. Is this what you need? Yeah, Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Practicing. Uh oh, I just made all my screens small. Oh my gosh. Hello? Hello? Kelly, we're on um, live. Okay. In case anybody's there early, can okay. you pull it back up? Okay, hold on just a second. Can you email it to me just a second? We can still see you. Okay, so I am sharing my screen and it's just the first slide. Okay, I'm back on. And awesome. I'm going to start in one minute. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, Keller ISD. 
We are coming to you live from the um, Keller Center for Advanced Learning, or KCAL, as you probably know it. I'm going to share my screen. I have a couple of slides to show you. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you joined us, you're here for Kickstart Your Learning. It's a live event we do um, every couple of weeks here from the Educational Technology um, Department, and it's usually on a Wednesday, 4.30 to 5, and today our topic is Read and Write. It's by a, an app developer named Text Help, and <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. There. um one of our favorite apps that they make is Read and Write. So you're here today to learn that, and that's what we're going to fo focus on. So I want to introduce everybody that's in front of the screen and behind the screen. So um, we have all of our beautiful people on the side of the screen there. First, we have Kelly Leach. She's our special education coordinator. And we have Avery Haynes. She's our lead genius, part of the Keller SD genius team. And um, of course, my name is Sara Smith. I'm a facilitator for educational technology. And uh, Laura Gonzalez, she's on our team as well. She's Hello. here helping moderate. Hi, Laura. And together there, we have Christy Harold, another ed tech facilitator, and she's with Lock Tran. He is um, part of our genius team. So the people behind the scenes, the moderators will be helping you with any questions you have in the chat window and um, just any of your comments. So a couple of quick logistics before we jump into our content. If you've been with us before, you probably know these steps, but if you haven't, if you're new, there's a chat window that you'll utilize to the right of the video screen, and it looks similar to what I have here on my screen. So if you're not seeing that, you're not seeing the, the section where you can chat, let me go to the next slide, you will be asked to create a channel. It's so easy. It's about two or three clicks. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on your avatar in the top right-hand corner, then you're going to click your channel, just like you see there in the screenshot. And then you're going to click create channel. There's a create channel button. Now, when you finish those three steps, you're going to um, come back to www.kellerisd.net slash kickstart. So where you started. So I'm going to give you just a second to do that. Those of you that might be new. And then we'll go on. So again, you're going to click your avatar in the top right hand corner, click on your channel and click create channel. So while y'all are finishing that up, I want to just talk real quickly about any, any of our participants that are interested in credit. So if you're interested in getting credit, a couple of things we ask, we just ask that you stay and watch the entire live event that you introduce yourself. So right now would be a great time in the chat window. Just introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, your campus, what your title is, what you teach. Um, also, at some point, we're going to ask you to comment. And anything along the way, if you want to comment about something great that you see, feel free. We love that. And um, feel free to ask questions. We have those um, our three moderators helping with the questions. And then at the very end, about the last two or three minutes, we are going to post a form link, which you will fill out that form for credit. So those are kind of the, the things um, that we need to do for credit. So I'm really, really glad everybody's here. And um, just a little side note, we do record these if you're not, you know, necessarily interested in credit and just the, the learning piece and you want to maybe go back to past YouTube lives and, and, and kickstart your learning events, you can do that with the same link you accessed our event today. After the event, um, we'll redirect that to our YouTube channel so you can see past, past um, events. So I hope everybody's there. Let us know in the chat if you have questions. Now, I am going to turn it over to our awesome Kelly Leach. She is standing by ready to show you guys read and write. I know it's what you've been waiting for all day. So, um, Kelly, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay. Okay. And let you share yours. All right. All right. Let me move my... And we can see you, so you're okay. good. Okay. All right. There we go. 
All right, hello everyone. I hope everyone can hear me. So someone let me know if I'm not being loud enough. All right, so what we're, um, we're in right now is just a, a Google Doc that's been opened up. And I'm going to progress from the top of the toolbar from the left to the right. So when we start, the first tool in the toolbar is called Check It. So I've already written some sentences incorrectly here. And I've already got the, the Check It tool underlined. So you'll notice some things in purple and that's just a clue to me to let me know that it's wrong. So when I click on it, it will let me, it's just checking, do you wanna change it to this sign? So I say yes. And then notice here, I have two capital letters and it asks me, do you wanna change it to just the first letter capital? And then here on you, it lets me, and it gives me several choices. And so then I'm going to, I'm making all of these correct. But one thing is um, you'll notice that it didn't on how are you, it didn't correct that that should be a question mark. So I've noticed in working with this tool that it does a good job of catching some vocabulary errors, but you'll notice when working with it, it doesn't always catch punctuation. It doesn't always connect, uh, correct every error, but it is a good start for our students so that they could look at it first before maybe a teacher looks at it. They could highlight their whole paper, click on this toolbar, and then it will have it underlined in purple and they could correct the things that they want. They still may choose a wrong answer. So it's not gonna be a perfect fix, but it is a good start for some of our students that struggle. And since I come from a special ed background, I especially would enjoy having students have this opportunity to be able to at least get a jump start and kind of see some options and get a little more independence. Kelly, uh -huh. Kelly um, will you show them if they, because I know you use this all the time, your toolbar uh -huh. is down. Show sure. them that purple puzzle piece on how to get. Oh, to okay. Yes. Okay. Just in um, case. Yes. Thank you for reminding me of that. All right. So at the top, for students to know if they want the puzzle piece to go away, they just click it once. If they want it to come back, it will come back. And you all can see my toolbar now, right? I mean, that's the puzzle piece, you can't. Yes. But yep. just to know if that's annoying or you want that taken off or the student wants to take it off, all they've got to do is click it. And if they open up a new tab, um, they may have to click it. It may not be there automatically. So just let them know if they're wondering where it is, just show them that it's all in that little purple puzzle piece right there. And all teachers and all students in Keller ISD have that purple puzzle piece. And also let them know they have access to it as long as they're in their uh, school Google, Google account at home. They have access um, to the same toolbar when they're doing homework at home. So let's move to the next um, tool. So this one is prediction. So if you'll notice, dogs. all I did was click it. And so because I was talking about dogs, let me make a space. It will give you what would think possibly be the next beginning of a sentence because I haven't done anything at this point except just clicked on this prediction toolbar. So if I put this, then it'll go ahead and put possibly a next word. But the students can go down and listen to each word and be able to choose. But let's say I start to write um, the, uh, uh, let me see, the, let me see, I'm going to start to write window. Well, I've only written that part and maybe that's all I can stand, sound out. I'm not quite sure. But then it gives me these choices. But when I hear the right word, then I can click it. So again, this is a great tool for students that may be struggling or it's a higher level student and they have a, a word that's a little bit harder to understand. So it will continue to keep giving me words. And so to undo it, all I need to do is take the, um, I need to click on the tool. So you notice at this point, nothing's underlined in purple. So let's say I want to go ahead and um, the student may be writing something or this, um, I'll show you and switch in a minute, but the same tool could be used on a website. Let's say I wanna know what that word means. And the next tool in the toolbar is a dictionary. So this um, little pop-up will come. I, it is movable. So you see, I can, I can move it wherever I need to move it. And so it gives definitions that are pretty basic. It will also give phrases and sentences. So sometimes it may seem like it's quite a bit for a student. So you can walk them through that process and let them know the common definition is here and what it may look like. But let's say the student needs even more support. Then I can also click the next button is this picture dictionary. Again, I can, I can move this. So I move it over. And you'll notice if I switch now and I want to look at another word, I didn't do anything. I've left up the dictionary and left up the picture dictionary. Now it'll switch words for me automatically in both. And I can also X them out at any time and uh, take them off. And um, 
The other thing I wanted to show you is the pictures. Well, this is kind of stuck over here. I don't know, there we go, maybe. So let me go back to money because I wanted to show you that the pictures are movable. So if the student's doing a project, I think this is kind of a, a cool part of this um, application is to be able to put the picture there for the students and the pictures all, they can move it wherever they need to. So that's a good option there. Then if the student's ready for it to um, not to use it anymore, all they need to do is exit and it's gone. So, so far we've looked at the first four, four tools. Now let's go ahead and look at, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this. And the next button is play. So when I hit play, okay, I'm gonna push, okay, I'm gonna pause it. So when I paused it, notice everything's gray. So when you use the full play button, you'll need to go ahead and, um, know that until you unclick it and pause isn't enough, you actually have to go over to the third one over and it says stop, take it off, then you'll notice all the other tools come up. So when you use play, it kind of stops everything else from working. They can pause it, but again, it will completely stop um, and bring all the other tools back until you push stop. I'm just gonna show you this one for time sake. We're not gonna spend much time on this one. Uh, this one's called the screenshot reader. You could have a PDF up or you could have something that they're looking at on a website. It can be used here if I had pulled something over that I want to that I want to read that's got um, that wouldn't be the normal text that you type, but it might have some picture I pulled over that's got a title underneath of it embedded in it, then it um, will read it for me. But I will tell you, I when I use a screenshot reader, sometimes it seems to freeze. It's one of the last tools they've added. So I know that uh, at different times when I've tried to use it, I have to kind of refresh and maybe even close out and come back. But it's something you could try if you had a, um, if the student had a PDF or you had a PDF or some other form of text other than what's type written that you want to have read, it's another option, but you kind of have to play with it. If you have a picture and you cover the whole thing, I've noticed that if you just cover just uh, like one little line in it, it may read it for you better. But because of what's embedded underneath that picture, it may be confused and say some things that that may not make sense. So you may, you may want to play around with that one. OK, so um, this is let's say I've written a paper and I want it to. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, delete that picture. OK, so it'll make it easier. So I've now moved from the screenshot reader. Now I'm moving over to the audio maker. So let's say that. Um, Possibly I've written a paper and I want to uh, have it read it um, back to me or I want to email it to myself and be able to hear it later or it's some text that's on a website that I want to listen to, then it's going to make this audio maker. So that's going to be something that's, I think it's an MP3, isn't that right, Sarah? that it's an MP3 that- Yes, going sorry about that, yes. Uh -huh, that's okay, that it's gonna be, and automatically also one thing I wanna share, anything that is made or done is going to go in the student's Google account. This can only be used on Chrome and um, anything that's done is automatically saved for them and it's put into their Google account and can be found in their, their Google account. So let's, uh, another tool that's really nice, and again, I'm thinking of any student, but especially my strugglers, strugglers, it might have been hard for them to go to another tab, look up a word, type it in. Well, if they just highlight a word and the next very next one is called a web search, it will automatically take them to the web where they, as if they've already typed it in and will be able to take them uh, to Google to look up more information about it. So that's nice that that's built in. The next one is called a screen mask. And so when you, when you click on that, and we'll talk a little bit later if we have time about options. You can change the coloring, the width, uh, um, the, the depth of it. But what it's going to do is for students that may have dyslexia or just prefer to have uh, a screen where it's like an overlay to where it'll only highlight what they want, then it will do that for them. This tool can also be used on the website. And again, we'll switch over to that into a minute where it uh, would be really nice to be able to just block out and only see the parts that they want to. And again, to be able to change that, you just go up and click on it and then, it's, and then it will go away. Okay, the next tool that I'm gonna show is really nice for students that will struggle um, 
uh, and before I start it, let me go ahead. Well, I'll go ahead and share this. Today, I was talking to some resource teachers in elementary and they said they had a, a mock star test and they had stu two students that needed to use this tool. And this is a tool that I've talked with assessment about, they're working on all the details, but a student that struggles with writing that really needs talk to type would be able to have this access when they take the star test. And so um, this is something that they could practice with, practice with, they need to be using it regularly. But they said that the student, one of uh, them had autism and actually wrote more than um, they normally would have written without that ability. So it's an accommodation that's set up for them. Another student is, um, has had surgery, has um, vision problems, and that was able to use this tool. And that honestly, it was one of the best papers they said that was written. And without this tool, they wouldn't have had that access. So when I'm done, I just click right there and then I'll be able to see what I've typed. The one thing you'll notice is that there is no punctuation. So you would have to train the students to be able to say period, where there needs to be a period or a comma or exclamation, exclamation point. It will not do that without them. It will do it once you say doing it. So let me just show you. Hello, period. How are you doing, question mark? I'm doing fine. So as soon as I tell it to do it, it will do it. But that's something you would have to train the students on so that they would understand that. The next one I'm gonna just talk about for a minute and we have time later, um, you would be able to, when you hit translator, if there's a word that's highlighted, it would translate it if you already had that uh, chosen into another language. And that's something on options you could choose because maybe it's a student from, who's read, I was just in a class today and a student had just come from Vietnam. He was really struggling in a geography class. So if he had the toolbar up, he might be able to look where he knew that this was an ocean in Vietnamese, but he doesn't know how to say in English or how to write in English. He would be able to use that tool. So uh, that's a fantastic thing for our students that need it. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a website. The same tools I'm showing you now are gonna be available. And again, I hit that purple toolbar, but I wanna show you uh, using the highlighter. So let's say that um, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight, let's say I'm doing some research and I wanna go ahead, I'm just highlighting something random, but let's say that's part of my research, then this, Next sentence is part of my research. I can use the same color or a different color. And if I had this whole article open, I might have bigger sections. So all I've done at this point is highlighted different parts of this text that I would like to include in my resource, research or for some other purpose. When I, so those are the highlights. And then I'm gonna go over to this tool that says collect highlights. All I do is click on it then it's going to make sure that the colors I want, and this is what I want to collect, I say, okay. You'll notice that it, it pops up and says that a new document is being created. I've done nothing at this point except highlight and click the button to collect the highlights. And so I'm gonna ask Avery right now to, um, to share, how do you think this tool might help you when you're doing your schoolwork? Um, definitely taking information from an article and putting it into a doc makes everything more organized and um, easier for essays and research papers. Okay. So. I love that. And Kelly, may I add, sure. hopefully teachers are out there in the chat. Um, I want to hear what, what y'all's favorite tool so far. I know we've only got, gotten through maybe three-fourths of the toolbar, but um, Read and Write has a lot there. I know we're going quickly, but what is your favorite tool so far? But Kelly, keep going. I love these tools. Okay. They're so amazing. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to show this is one of my favorites. And uh, while I'm here, all you need to do to take the highlights away. So if the student goes back, show them, highlight everything. And then you're going to go to this little broom that says clear highlights. And then all the highlights are gone. But uh, this is one of my very favorite tools. Let's say I have, for as a special ed teacher or a student maybe as from ESL uh, that I would, uh, teaching them, I would ask them to say, let's look at this article. Would you go ahead and highlight any words that you are unsure of what they mean? And so let me just highlight a few here. I'm gonna choose a few that will do what I need it to do. <laughs> so let's see, scientist. 
Okay. And so I've asked them to go ahead and collect words, just highlight the ones that you're not sure of. And then I'm gonna ask them to click this button that just says the vocabulary. Once they click it, again, it's letting you know it's creating a Google Doc. But again, all the student has done is highlighted those words and hit the word vocabulary. And this is wonderful for some of my special ed students. They have the accommodation of having a vocabulary list. And so this is something they can create on their own. They don't need to wait for the teacher to make it. And this is their own Google Doc. So you see that it's got the word, the meaning, a symbol, any notes that can be typed in here. The student can type any notes. I can also let them know and work with them that they can adjust this. So I'm gonna just delete that. That was not part of what I wanted. That's not part of what I wanted. So they're able to go ahead and um, alter it any way they want to. The pictures again are movable, so I can move them. So even though it created this vocabulary, vocabulary list, they can adjust it any way that they want. Sometimes I've noticed if I highlight different words, there's not a picture for it. So you might wanna walk them through that. You may have to show them how to use that web search in Google so that they would know um, what is a good symbol or picture of what that is. But to me, this is a fantastic tool that really helps our students that may be struggling with vocabulary. And it could be a higher level student that wants to know something that they've not, um, they're not really understanding the text. So another tool that, let me go ahead and take those off. Um, I know teachers are changing their answers right now to that tool. <laughs> That's probably. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. And I know, and just looking at the time, I know we're getting close. So I want to um, show you, I want to show one more thing here that I'm going to go back and show the voice note that you can add on the Google Docs. I think those are tools the teacher would like. We know sometimes, I'm going to go ahead and um, click on this whole article, hit the two ball, toolbar again. So if we wanna simplify text, that's really, that's a difficult thing to do. But if I click on the, oh, well, and I will say that, I'm kind of glad it's happening. So you'll see sometimes it takes a minute to come. So just be patient. You notice it took a second to come. All I've got to do, so we hit the vocabulary list. The very next thing is simplify page. So if I've asked a student to read this and they're struggling, when they click on this, they can hit simplify about four times it will keep simplifying the picture and it will take, and now it stops. So that's as much as it's gonna simplify. And you see that it took the pictures away, the advertisements away. And now I have the crux of what this article is about, but without all of that distraction. And so that's another accommodation through SPED we have definitely is to simplify text, but just students, any student that wants to do that, um, it would be very helpful for them to get down to what they just need to see. And then if you want to increase it, you just go back again and you increase, increase, and it brings it back. And then you can go back to the article. Okay, for time's sake, I wanna show one more thing that I think is really important. Let's say that a student, a student can hit this. Um, so I just wanted to show you, here's the highlights, just like we showed before, same thing, clear it, collect, and then the vocabulary list, just like we saw on the, um, the web page, But on the voice note, this is a really neat tool. So let's say I want to email my teacher and let her know where I'm stuck, or she's received something in maybe the classroom that I've emailed to her and she wants to add a voice note. All I do is click that. And once I hit the microphone, it will start to record whatever I'm gonna say. So um, I'm gonna pretend like I'm the student and I'm gonna go ahead and start recording. Um, Ms. Smith, I was wondering if you could go ahead and help me. I started to put this paper together, but. At this point, I'm really struggling. I feel like I need to have better transitions, but I just seem to keep using then a lot. I don't know what else I can add. So maybe tomorrow, or if you can send me back a message and let me know, what do you feel like might be some good transitions? Okay, so at that point, I'm finished. I wanna insert it. And when you see those colors going back and forth again, it's processing and putting it together. So over here, and let me move my bar so I can see it. When I look over here, here's the voice note. Okay, so there I've got a voice note. So if I'm doing this at home and I wanna give a message to my teacher or she's recording at home, she could do that. Um, and then there's a hit for reply. So Avery, again, I'd like to ask you, what do you think uh, about this tool? How could it be helpful for you? Um, I feel like it would impact me more as a student hearing my teacher talk to me uh, through the doc kind of makes more of a personal experience telling me what I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing right, uh, makes me better. 
Okay, awesome. I feel like that's a really, really good tool. Okay, I'm not going to show it. I just want to let you know this is one more tool. Um, it's practice reading aloud where a student could um, go ahead and record themselves and something they're going to present. They can practice it over and over and it actually can also uh, time so that you could look at fluency and email that to you. So that's something if you want more time um, at looking at that, you can um, go ahead and explore with that a little bit. But because we're so close to our time being over at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Sara to share the last few details that we wanted to share today. Yeah. So I'm going to unshare my screen right now, Sara. Okay. Yes. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Okay. We'll try this again. Um, teachers out there. Wow. We did great on time. Um, I'm going to go back to our slideshow to show you a couple of things I have. Um, if you'd like to learn more, because I know there's only so much we can do in 30 minutes, it's pretty quick. We've put together some helpful resources. So text help has a training center with lots of how to documents and YouTube videos and, and things like that. So the first link is um, training.texthelp.com. And then the second one is their YouTube channel. So we have provided a shortened link. So bit.ly, bit.ly slash read and write tube. Hopefully you can remember that or write it down. Um, the, it is case sensitive. So the R, the W, and the T are capitalized. But you can always um, search on YouTube for their channel as well. Now, one thing that I just want to reiterate, Kelly mentioned, this app or resource is pushed out in Keller ISD to every student and every teacher. So you guys should all see that purple puzzle piece if you're using Chrome in the top right corner. And then again, to reiterate, reiterate what she said, you can use that toolbar both in a Google Doc and on the web. So, and they're very, very similar. The toolbars look very, very similar, but okay. We are um, getting close. But I want to go ahead and put up, I may talk about some other little logistics, but I want to put this up so you guys can see it. Um, this bit.ly, so it's bit.ly slash kickstart live. And please note the capital letters, it is case sensitive, is your link to fill out a form and get credit for this. So if you stayed the entire time and you commented and you were engaged I'd love for you to get EQ credit and PD credit for being here um, I'm trying to think what else I, I did mention this earlier if you access our kickstart site which is another link www.kellerisd.net slash k-i-c s-t-a-r-t just kickstart later you will see this recording and all of our past events. We've done all kinds of things like Google Classroom and I can't even remember Google Docs. We've done, um, I'm trying to think, Google Sheets, lots of Google this last year, but um, we definitely have a theme going. But hey, if you fill out this form for credit, that's your chance to let us know what you want us to do next because we're not going to do one in December but we are going to have one planned for January so please fill out the form and give us your feedback let us know what you'd like to see us do next um, Kelly any yeah. final thoughts I think just to make sure there are quite a few ways that you can adapt this toolbar in the options button so speaking with your librarian Last year, there was a group that um, were trained, and so you should have a trainer, but I would check with that librarian. They probably know, or maybe the one that was trained, to know how you could adjust it for students if needed, because there's there's quite a bit there that you can do to alter it to make it fit for just their needs. That is correct, and um, those of you interested, just look for the dots at the top right of your toolbar, and it will drop down to options. You can, she mentioned that translator um, tool in the toolbar. You can select different um, languages. You can also select different, when you're having it read to you, different accents. So there's all kinds of ways you can personalize. You can even turn off some of the buttons if you like. Mm -hmm. So please check that out. Um, and your librarian was trained um, in the last year or so on read and write, and they can steer you in the right direction. But definitely check out our resources, check out, and I'm going to go from this um, page back to our resources. 
There we go. One last time. I hope you guys grab those. But it is five o'clock. So I want to thank Locke, Christy, Laura, Avery, and Kelly. You guys have a wonderful night. And I'm so thankful that you teachers have carved out some time to join us because I think this is a really great tool. Um, thank you so much. Bye, everybody.